down in the Falcon's Nest at Robbinsdale Armstrong High School. I'm Bill Hupp alongside broadcast partner Sid Ligry for girls soccer here on CCX this afternoon on an overcast afternoon here on a Tuesday in Robbinsdale. And we'll have a good game for you coming up as Tatino Grace, the Eagles coming in with a record of one and one, come to visit the new club, Armstrong Cooper FC, the combined football club between Armstrong and Cooper High Schools combining their forces and said let's start with the visitors the Eagles they come in with a one and one record but it really starts for the Eagles on defense well that's their strength right now is defense they have some good return players playing D their their midfield's fairly strong they're good at looking down on the defense to see what's available for them and are capable of moving the ball towards that area we'll see how the passing goes that's what they're working on and they're also working on the transition that's something we always key on how, how well does the team transition of defense to the counter so how do they time it how do they move together that's a sign of a One. term of a, a of a very strong team season team and that's what we'll be looking for for Totino Grace Eagles coming off of a 12 and 5 season last year and they haven't lost to a Robbinsdale school since 2018. Meanwhile on the other side coach Matt Thibodeau leads a, a group of combined schools Armstrong and Cooper they combine in hockey and now they're combining in girls soccer and uh, Sig talking to, to coach Thibodeau before the game it's really just about how these two teams come together how is the cohesion going so far this season? It seems to be going fairly well they're, they're, they're playing together well they're learning from each other they're, they're, they see what the other players are doing. They're moving the ball. Uh, same as, as Totino Grace. They're, they're working on the defense, working on transition. Midfield's pretty good. They can penetrate. They're smart. They know what to look for, and they know how to move the ball well. ACFC has played their first two games at Robbinsdale Cooper. This one, the first tonight at Robbinsdale Armstrong. Totino Grace and ACFC coming up next here on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. From Armstrong High School here in Plymouth, Minnesota, the Falcons Nest. First time it's hosted this newly combined club as uh, Armstrong and Cooper are now ACFC. Armstrong Cooper Football Club, as you see Matt Thibodeau talking to his uh, charges, wearing the blue kits with the the uh, orange uh, numbers. It's 84 and partly cloudy. Uh, feels better than it did last week as I bring my broadcast partner, Sid Ligry, in and said it was humid and hot last week. It's still hot, but not as bad as it was last week. No, the uh, temperature is about 83, 84. Dew points right around 64. So it's much better than the last time we were c covering a game. But for the players, we'll see how it works out. It, they may get tired easy because of the uh, humidity and the heat from the sun, but since they have unlimited substitution, it should not be a big factor. Numbers, uh, interesting, Armstrong had 32 girls come out for soccer and uh, Cooper had 15, but they bef decided before the season to combine forces. And so that's how ACFC was born, similar to the AC Wings, the hockey combined programs between these two schools in Robbinsdale as ACFC kicks off and we're underway. They're moving left to right in the all maroon uh, or all blue uh, new uniforms with the orange uh, numerals and trim. Tatino Grace in the white with the navy blue numerals. They're one and one on the season are the Eagles. ACFC comes in with a record of two and one. As we get underway, this is a girls-boys doubleheader. We'll also have the boys game immediately following this one here in Plymouth. And quickly underway to Tino Grace racing down the left side with Keila Terhar. Terhar. Still, a, still has the ball. Now tries the center. It's Missed. loose in the box, and they shoot and score. And uh, 42 seconds into this contest, Tatino Grace gets on the board and it was slotted home 
by Elena Engum. We'll see the replay here, but she was just right place, right time. But this play sig was really made by the captain, Kayla Terhar, who carried it to the end line, right. crossed it, and then eventually was slotted home. You see the end of it. Nice cross right there. Missed shot, and that one is not missed. As it was kind of scuffed there by Elena Jacob, but it fell fortuitously right to Elena Engum, and Engum made no mistake, the junior forward, giving the Eagles a 1-0 lead just 42 seconds into this first half. Boy, you talk about not wasting time. That, you know, we were talk about transition. It was the turnover back in the Armstrong or ACFC zone. A little one-two between Engum and Terhar, and it's... Cleared away by Faith Holmes. Only as far as Elizabeth Thompson. Chasing on to it, number 20, Emily Ling, one of five captains in the side this afternoon for Titino Grace. Elena Jacobs squares it for Molly Vance. Vance came in having scored one of the two goals. She takes a shot, it nearly goes in. It actually goes off the, the boot of Carla Terhar, who couldn't keep it in, but a great effort by Molly Vance. Daughter of, of course, Totino Grace boys coach, Bill Vance. Bill Vance, one of my uh, respected friends and uh, one of the respected coaches in, in the uh, Twin Cities area. Very, very nice man, very knowledgeable. As you see, Sam Everson, the goalie for ACFC, 20 saves and a, just a .67 goals against average coming in. So Totino Grace getting off the schneid early. They had scored just two goals in two games. But they get a goal 42 seconds into this contest, and they lead it 1-0. Boy, you talk about bolstering your confidence. Sure, sure. As Jacob battles for possession in the midfield. <clears throat> Olivia Schroeder gets it wide for Vance. Offside. And nope, she loses it out of play on the far side. So a throw in. I don't know. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen five captains on I, one team. So, I haven't either. I've seen uh, anywhere from one to three, but never five. But that just goes to show you how much uh, head coach Matt Thibodeau trusts his leadership. I guess it makes sense. You know, spread the leadership around a little bit. There's a pass up ahead looking to, for Grace uh, Cruzy. And it's toe poked out of bounds into the bench of ACFC. Been all to Tino Grace so far after the initial kickoff. A little one two trying to play tear hard down the channel. She's pressing hard, but they managed to clear it up to Abby Hansen. Hansen with those orange boots switches at middle. No foul. Play on says the ref as it's cut out nicely. And we talked about it in the pregame sig, but we feel that. Totino Grace's defense is, is where they're strongest as they bring a lot of experience back. And we'll get to that point in a second. Elaine, Elena Jacob gets it into the box. Step over, gets across, but it's cut out initially by Holmes. Back to Jacobs for Cruzy at the top of the box. She winds up a shot and Everson well behind it to make the save. So a good, good start here for AC or for uh, uh, Totino Grace, as you see, Iverson just a, Everson really just a freshman, Sam Everson. Well, it's interesting when you look at the roster. The other keeper is also a ninth grader. Square. Shot. And Elena Engum was looking for her second, but she yeah. just uh, split the goalpost right there. Yeah, that one is halfway down the highway. Way high. But yeah, you're right. I like Totino Grace is coming out aggressive. Moving the ball well. And you're talking about the defense you saw in the previous set that they came right up and put that ball away before it can get into any kind of danger area or in the, th in the third zone. Well, so far, Totino Grace has done a terrific job getting into dangerous areas, getting it down the wings, and uh, forcing the defense to deal with it. We're at five minutes gone by here in the opening half. Totino Grace leads. ACFC 1-0. And in case you're wondering, it's Armstrong Cooper Football Club. That's what ACFC stands for. Turning with it, Izzy Anderson, senior midfielder with a goal on the season. Well defended and poked away initially by Abby Lord. Kept in for a moment by Cecilia Savard, one of those five 
captains, but it goes out of play on the near side. And now can ACFC get some sustained possession here in the final third of Totino Grace? Eagles want to possess the ball. They want to play it out the back as it goes out of play off of Anderson. What do you think of how the Eagles have looked so far, Sig? Well, I think they look very solid. They're moving the ball well. They're getting the throw-ins in quickly. They're moving downfield by way of uh, throw-ins, but whatever it takes, you know. Seem to be attacking this left wing as Engum loses it. Defended on the play by Ella Pica. Engum goes for goal, and oh. it's good save by oh, wow. Everson. I'm not sure how much she knew about it. We'll have to see a replay, but she made the save and then watched it go by her right post. Fortunate that they're not down two as Engum turned yeah. and got a good strike on it and a low bounding shot. I was, think she got her knee on it, didn't she? Yeah, it just kind of smothered and went out of play. So not the surest of saves, but a stop nonetheless, and it forces a corner for Totino Grace, their second of the half. Angum to the near post and it goes out of play. So credit to Everson for making a really nice save. And now she'll get it back. Actually, I believe that was just knocked out of play at the near post. Yep, we'll try it again. Then all Eagles so far as she pounds it to the back post and then it's cleared but not out. Holmes pressured by Ellen Jacob. And it goes out of play. Substitution coming up for ACFC. MK Dyson will check in. Nice job by Terhar, but she's ultimately shielded from the ball. It goes over the end line for a kick. Couple substitutions, a pair of eights checking in. Mackenzie Keene, junior midfielder, who had one of two Eagles goals coming into this game on the season. She's also checking in. Number eight, Mackenzie Keene. Great start for Terhar, especially down this left wing. That seems to be yes. where they want to attack. Yeah, they like that right, that uh, left side of the field. That's where they've been moving in. Nice little layoff <laughs> there by Lauren Jones, who leads this team in scoring with a couple goals this season. But a nice job by Molly Vance to skip past her defender. Vance cuts it back on her right foot. Now she's double teamed and it goes out of bounds on the far side. One nothing Eagles on a goal by Elena Engham, just 42 seconds into this contest here in Robbinsdale. Nice little footwork and Everson slides to keep it in play. A couple freshman goalies, Coon Rapids starts a freshman goalie as well. Saw them play against Centennial last week. Saw a terrific game as well between Centennial and Blaine. Ooh, that must have been good. It was, yeah. Bengals looked real good and won that one 2 0. Kendall Stadden is a player. And impact sub, Mackenzie Keene pressuring Faith Holmes. Finally cleared into the ACFC bench. And Totino Grace has really been on the front foot this first 10 minutes. Yes, they have. Angam, who has the goal, turns, trying to line up a shot. Can't get her shot off, and eventually it's blasted toward uh, Everson's net, but wide. That off the boot of Emily Ling, the senior Andy midfielder. CFC number 48, Andy Shivek. Andy Shivek comes into the game. He playing uh, left fullback for ACFC. Goal kick comes out to just about midfield. ACFC with control. Gonna try and get it up to their advance forward, but uh, there it goes finally. Trying to get a through ball, but it's cut out nicely right there by Elizabeth Thompson. 
sister of Caitlin. So two of the starting fullbacks are Thompson sisters. Nice job. Shielding off by Mackenzie Keene, who now carries it. Keene trying to ward off Ella Picca. Still Gets it to the byline and tries to get a cross in. Well defended there by Kira Snapko. Again, really purposeful, getting it down the yep. wing, getting it to the byline. Right. But Keene has come in and done just what Terrar did, which was get it in. Nice block, though, to uh, clear the danger. And let's see, is this the third corner? Yep, third corner. Actually, fourth if you count uh, as Engum takes it. Punched away by Everson. But nice deep place. That was a good corner kick. Put, yeah. it, in the, put it in the middle of the danger area. It was. Whoa. Keen goes down. She's clipped. Play on, says the ref. Could wow. have been appeals for penalty. But instead, they play it out for Ling. Through the middle, this is Grace Cruzy. She's knocked over by Izzy Anderson, and we got a foul in a dangerous area now for a free kick just outside the box. As you see here, there's Kane. What is this movement? It's yeah, absolutely clipped. It looked yeah. like from Emma K by Emma K Dixon and, and or then, Dyson. And yeah, then. there's the one that was called. That was right, in the elbow right in the back. Dangerous area to be giving up a free kick. And we've seen the powerful shot of Elena Engum already. She stands over it. Engum. Hi. Tried to pick out that corner. She wasn't too far. No, nope, wasn't too far off. That was a good shot. Good try. Engum already has seven. her first goal of the season, the junior striker, and she nearly got a second. And now we hear the goal kick coming up for Everson. Everson takes it. I've never seen the fake defender and then the goalie take it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but okay. That's a new play. So then this is Grace Cruzy dancing through defenders. It's been probably about 70% per possession so far as she plays Vance into the channel. Vance cuts back inside on her right foot, shoots, oh, that big was save a, made by Everson. That was a huge save. That ball was gonna go zipping right past, had a good angle, headed for the net. Everson popped up and made a save. Not the biggest goalie we've seen, but Vance, as you see, puts a defender down and then fires it, and Everson had her angles right and punched it over the crossbar. As you see Vance getting a substitution off the... Tino Grace, number six. But it's another oh, corner yes. now for Tatino Grace and Elena Engum. <laughs> that was a great shot. Engum with another good ball, and Everson avoids a, an on-rushing Keen to take care of it. That was a great shot. So between Engum and, and Vance, we've seen some really uh, dangerous offensive opportunities. So far for Titino Grace, who have run the show so far in the first 14 minutes. They've got a deserved one goal lead. Cruz, or Cruzy rather. Trying to pay the, play those tight angles with uh, Jacob. And it'd be interesting, Sig, to see how each coach decides to use substitutions as well. Angum turns, gets it wide. Keen on her left foot. Toe poked away, Keen. Shielding off a defender. Trying to get a cross in. Finds Eng up at the top of the box. Chance trying to curl it in from distance. Grace Cruzy, but she couldn't quite get the uh, bend that she needed. <laughs> As you see the head coach for Armstrong, Nick Weatherall. Substitution for ACFC. Entering the field number 22. Taking Anna notes Grace. and uh, kind of calmly watching on from behind the bench. Sig, what did you think of your conversation with Coach Weatherall before the game? Well, he was pretty optimistic about his team and, and the chances. It, obviously, he's going to have to work on uh, getting the ball away from Tatino Grace. I mean, the defense is there, but, but they're just being swarmed. 
Keen on her left foot, trying to get it some room. Shoots. Great save. Everson again punches it away. Strong hands from the freshman to push it aside and again force another corner for Tatino Grace. As you see, Keen just gets a step. That's all she needed. That's all she, yeah. You know, Keen has such a good uh, eye for where the ball's going to be. Tatino, I mean, they, ha they are. Everson is well positioned. They're shooting it yep. right at her, and she is, to her credit, coming up with the big stops. She's made three big stops. Boy, they got this corner kick nailed down, don't they? They sure do, yeah. Engum can put it on that far post seemingly at will. Has not resulted in a goal yet, but what did they have? Five, according to your stats, five or six five. corners already? They have uh, six. Six corner kicks unofficially in this game so far for Tatino Grace and that's just shows you I mean I want if I want to say that without looking at the stats that Everson already has made four saves that I can think of uh, she's got five five saves for Everson yep look I'm looking over at our uh, ace statistician Willie Markham <laughs> and Willie says yeah they got she's got five saves and three of those were big Amazing. Helena Engham off to a flying start here as the sun continues the set. And certainly the uh, kids hoping it'll cool off. It'll be interesting challenge, too, for the goalies. You see Everson shielding her eyes in net, yep. looking into that sun. Uh, that's a good point. So if you're coming in from the left side and you shoot something high, Everson is going to be staring right into that sun. There was a time when goalies used to wear ball caps. Really? But uh, yeah, at, at one point, but uh, which makes total sense on a sunny day. You don't, you don't see him in shades, but ball caps sometimes. See if that ever comes back. Dancing past defenders. Boy. For Angum turns. I'm not sure if she was planning to shoot. It was blocked out of bounds anyway. But Angum not afraid to shoot from anywhere, seemingly. Down. And None of the forwards are, are afraid to shoot. Jacob uh, has it knocked off her foot and out of play as Engum continues to uh, make her presence felt. It's a throw in now for Chloe Nuss off the bench. Engum drops it for Jacob. She'll put a shot on target and just miss the right post. That was less power and more precision from one of the co-captains, <laughs> Ellen Jacob, but she nearly snuck it in that, that far post. Yeah, you got to wonder if the coaching staff has been telling the Tatino Gris players to go for those angle shots because that's what they're doing. They only had maybe two or three that point black. The rest of them were off to at angles. I mean, it's not a bad idea if you can pick out those corners. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's nigh impossible to stop. Jacob thought she'd been fouled, no call. So we play on as Ella Camp loses it out. No stoppage? No, it's, on, it's from the football practice behind us. Angum on the turn, defended by Kendall Thurston. Angum with a step. Thurston, oh. nice sliding tackle to take it away. That was a good tackle because she, she was on her way. Mm -hmm. And she needed to get it right, otherwise that would have been a foul, probably a card. Well, if you're Matt Thibodeau for Thibodeau for uh, Tatino Grace, you have to be very pleased as that ball down the line was a little heavy, but you have to yep. be very pleased with oh, how yeah. your Eagles have started this game. Yeah, they must be jumping for joy down on the Eagles uh, coaching staff. You will see it again. There's Matt Thibodeau. As you see, Coach Thibodeau sending on uh, Abby Lord. He's got a nice veteran squad. He's got a good mix of seniors and juniors. Elizabeth Thompson, the only underclassman who really who starts anyway. A couple come off the bench, but we're midway through this first half here at Armstrong High School, and Tatino Grace struck early, and they have kept the pressure on this ACFC defense. Yeah, it's been something else. Here comes Kane again. Gets inside. Oh, nice. Squares <laughs> it, but no one was there. I think she might have been better served to take it herself, but Emma K. Dyson clears instead. Yeah, I think she was going to press the ball between the two defenders and uh, get a good cross off. Number 10, Abby Lord. 
Didn't seem like there were many of her teammates there for support, though. Not that time. As Ellen Eng Alina Engum gets a uh, well-deserved rest after scoring and contributing big time in this first half as that one goes off of Kane and out of, out of play. Sig, what do you expect to see in the uh, boys game that will follow here in this typical mm -hmm. doubleheader, 5-7 doubleheader? In a normal year, I would expect kind of a wild game back and forth, back and forth, but I'm looking at the team of Grace's record and I'm trying to understand what happened to this team because they're usually a contender for a state tournament. Molly Orstan tried to send one through, but I don't I don't think the ball has gone in the Totino Grace box. We have not nope, called the once. name of Kalen Cantwell yet. Yep, they, they did from the opening kickoff. They marched down the field to about the 20-some yard line and they lost it, and that's when Totino Grace took off down the left side and, and scored. And meanwhile, Kane. Kane's on it again. She gets past her defender pickup, gets to the byline, and the cross is dealt with by Thurston. But, yeah, we have not called the name of Kaylin Cantwell, the junior goalkeeper for Totino Grace, as the Eagles have earned yet another corner kick, Sing. Entering for the Eagles, number 11, Abel DeWitt. Number seven corner. Abel DeWitt into Boy. the uh, game for the Eagles. If corner I, number seven. If I were C A C A S C I would be worried, or ACFC, I'd be worried about these number of corners because they're placing them quite well. Here's another one. Including that one <laughs> just <laughs> over the head of one of the Eagle players. Yeah, I didn't see who it was, but she just it was went past her head just barely. If you didn't make contact, that was that ball was in the net. Just evaded the head of Abby Lord. Cut out nicely by Orstadt. DeWitt takes it away. And Totino is playing some really unselfish, really nice yep. soccer as well. That's really this is team this, first soccer. Yeah, this is a coach's dream when, when the team is passing the ball, they're looking for somebody else, they're not going to make anything, any super uh, selfish move. Only other thing he'd like is another goal. Yeah. They've had loads of possessions, seven corners. Well, looking at the stats here from Willie, Eagles have 10 shots, five on goal, 50% on shot percentage. That's pretty good. I mean, 10 shots already. Yeah, which is barely over the first half of the first half. To, to where, <laughs> again, in goal for to Tino Grace, the goalie, Kaylin Cantwell. Cantwell hasn't touched it, uh, I think she's let alone made a save. Yeah, if it keeps going on like this, she's going to have to send out for pizza <laughs> <laughs> just for something to do. <laughs> there are some excellent pizzerias in Robbinsdale. It's true. Oh, don't tell me that. I love pizza. 16-16 <laughs> remaining first half. ACFC trailing at home 1-0 to... <laughs> To Tino Grace, as we said, oh. their first two games of the season were uh, at Cooper. As this one goes out of play, it'll be a goal kick for ACFC. First two games of the season were uh, against Heritage Christian and Rockford, and they won both of them, 2-1 and 2-0, but then lost 1-0 to Holy Angels as the captain, Marin Sherbert, returns for ACFC. This is their first home game of the season at Armstrong after starting the season with a couple of Cooper. Cooper will be the home for the most part um, for ACFC. First season as a combined program, these two. And as we said, Tino Grace has won three straight, or they'd won three straight anyway over Robbinsdale Armstrong, the team that they would have been normally playing on this field. There's a trip, and Abby Lord goes down. It'll be a free kick. No, I beg your pardon, that was Elizabeth Thompson from up from her fullback position that went down. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Yeah, they are going to call a foul. Yep. I was yeah. wondering if they're going to let that by and let it be a uh, a throw. throw. Now. But I think that's the right call. So Thompson will try to get it to the top of the 18-yard box. He evades DeWitt. Holmes hooks it out of there. Thompson up. Holmes in a big collision knocks over Kane. Play on, says the ref. 
He plays the advantage. Square for Lord, and she can't quite get a shot on it. Yep, and that collision, the defender was one who felt it the most. She's still down on the surf. Faith the Holmes still shaken up after she collided and uh, knocked over Mackenzie Kane. So maybe just got the wind out, of, knocked out of her. Here you see, see the collision Here's here. Collision. Yeah, no foul on either side. They just ran into each other, both making contact with the ball. That can be jarring, especially if those knees yeah. collide. So there's a break in the action while they attend to the downed ACFC player. So Holmes shaking up, getting attended to. And while they attend to Holmes down in the field, we'll take a timeout as well. 13.52 remaining here in the first half. 1-0 to Tino Grace over ACFC here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Fielder. And we're back here at Robbinsdale Armstrong High School, the Falcons Nest. Bill Hupp along with Sid Ligry for CCX. First of a girls boys doubleheader between Totino Grace and ACFC is uh, Kendall Thurston, the senior midfielder, is actually the one who was shaken up. I was calling her Faith Holmes, I apologize. So Thurston down, but she up uh, is up on her own power, walked off and Hopefully see her back as a substitute before long. Tino Grace looking to run their record to two and one. And they're off to a dominant start so far. Having uh, had most of the possession and all of the shots thus far. Lord a little bit turned around and she gets knocked off the ball by Raina Ricks. Freshman striker. Now Lord gets it back and plays it for Vance. In the middle here for Olivia Schroeder. Gives it for Chloe Nuss. Not much on the shot, and Everson off her line to make the, the save. And you can tell watching Everson, Sig, that she's got some solid goalie fundamentals. She's just a solid keeper back there, and she looks confident. Yes, she does. Shoulder square to where the ball is coming from. Staying in her position, staying home. As and now, uh, Tatina Grace bringing the ball back and loading up again for their attack. Yep, good ball played into the channel by Cecilia Servard. Everson off her line, gets there right ahead of Lord. Mm -hmm. As the... Uh, I, think the that was a little, I think that was a little closer than she anticipated yeah. it was going to be. <laughs> well, the the most that the Tatino Grace back line has really had to do with pass it among themselves back right around midfield is... Oh, nice takeaway. That was a nice takeaway, DeWitt. A lot of short, intricate passing for Totino Grace in this first half. Lord gets it wide for Nuss. Nuss dribbling through defenders. Gives it for DeWitt. It's cleared, but only as far as number 16, Elizabeth Thompson. And Near side for Keene, and it gets stepped into. Well defended there. Yep. I think the defense has figured out that they have to keep an eye on McKenzie Kane because she's adept at getting the ball down and making some good crosses. Molly Vance, who we've referenced al already, checking in, taking out uh, Chloe Nuss. Vance has been dangerous down the right wing as well here in this first half. 
Flicked on by Lord. Cleared. But not out. Now it's <laughs> out. Out of play right in front of Michael. Great camera vision, uh, camera point for our CCX crew. Lord, a little heavy on the touch, and it ends up being clear. That is Faith Holmes. Their attack pretty narrow right now, but uh, certainly they've wow. been willing to do that as DeWitt. Nice footwork by Schroeder to get the ball to DeWitt. Yeah, it's not not only position and passing, but if you notice that the skill that they have of getting the ball around a defender, around a midfielder. Yeah, no question. As Vance gets it in the middle, it's punched up and then knocked out of the goal <laughs> like a volleyball player by Everson. Well done. Can't celebrate, though, as Keen crosses it once more, and this time it's booted to safety by Ava Marilek. Look at this play right here, Sig. This is a phenomenal save. Goes way up in the air like a volleyball player and bats it down right back into the playing area. <laughs> that is wonderful. Smart punch as Olivia Schroeder did get a, a knee to it and kind of knocked it into the air, but... But uh, Everson, with the presence of mind to, to know that she just has to get it yep. off her goal line yep. Yep. One as way soon as possible. One way or the other. Punch it or slap it. Here we go. Another great corner kick. Boy, they do just put him into some dangerous areas as the defense overruns it. And now it's a chance for ACFC to get some breathing room. Finally get the counter going, and then it's picked off by the Eagles. Up to guess who, Kane. Tino Grace has been relentless. Schroeder looking for Lord. Great ball. Lord on her left foot to the byline. And again, the cross, not much on it. I thought maybe it had hit off the defender, but uh, goal kick. Yep, it's goal kick. It was a nice try, but I think she ran out of real estate and tried to, to uh, uh, finesse the ball on this side of the goal, goal line, but it didn't work. It must be something they're really drilled to do, Sig, because they have the chance to take mm -hmm. the angle and shoot, but they are choosing to drag it to the byline and then center it every time. This is Lord for Vance. Vance splitting defenders. Molly Vance <laughs> oh, can't yes. pick out the corner. Just drags it wide. Yeah, it's becoming pretty obvious now that the, the Tino Grace forwards are shooting the angle shots. They got to be up to what, 15 shots now? 14? Uh, let me see what Willie has. It's got 14 shots, seven on goal. It's 50% on shot. And a couple of them have been just like that, just dragged wide. Yep. And the only reason that ACFC is still in this game is because Everson's playing e well. She's playing extremely well. She's getting more than her share of opportunities. See, there's another great position ball to right win. there. Dancing through defenders. Engum back on the pitch, and she turns. Patiently going wide with it. Well defended by number three, Katie Velez. Taken back by Ling. Vance at the top of the box, trying to force it through. So dangerous, this Tatino Grace attack. You know, I can think of three or four players on the Eagles side that are extremely dangerous and somebody they have to watch out for and they are not afraid to shoot in in a, uh, a tight zone definitely not now Engum's back in there the goal scorer finds Lord or finds uh, rather Cruzy try to get uh, Kane instead it's swept out by Ella Pica yeah I don't know if who's that played pretty well I think in that fullback yeah. role that that right fullback role you know, sometimes you have to wonder, when is a good time to kick the ball over the touchline? And maybe that was a good time to do it, to get regrouped. Deflects up for Everson. That went off of the leg of uh, Grace Cruzy as they tried to clear it, and it just went right fortuitously into the hands of Sam Everson. Freshman goalkeeper gives it a boot. So I don't know if that would be registered, if Willie registers that officially as a shot or just... No. Not officially a shot. Not on not on his book. <laughs> no. <laughs> down line for Molly Vance. Vance tracks it down in the right corner. Trying to keep it in play and can't. Forced out of bounds by Andy Schweck. Entering for the Eagles, number 20. Yeah, that's quite Jayden the weapon Thomas. you got. 
McKenzie Kane on the left side. You got Vance on the right side. And you get Ingham in the middle. Pick That's, your poison. Yeah. <laughs> you can, how, how, how thin can you spread your defense? You can't mark them all. Couple substitutions as the heat continues to, or the sun continues to beat down. Just a, a beautiful afternoon it's turned out to be. The clouds have gone away and now it's, I would say mostly sunny and in the upper 80s or the uh, lower 80s, I beg your pardon. Seven minutes to go here in the first half. As again, Engum tried to go off of Holmes, but instead it'll be a goal kick. And number seven, Ella Camp coming in for ACFC. Replacing the captain, Marin Sherber. Good teamwork as they go back through the defense with Caitlin Thompson. She tries to pick out Cruzy. I've not really seen too many fouls called. Thought we no. might there, but ultimately again, Tatino Grace clears the danger. And gets it up ahead to Kane. Yeah, looking over at Willie, he says there's uh, two fouls called in the first half. Pretty cleanly played and yep. uh, fast moving first half. <laughs> Only one injury stoppage as that was cleared away by Izzy Anderson. And as you see, Kendall Thurston still Recuperating on the bench. Can't imagine we'll see her again until the second half at most. Yeah, we'll see what the injury is. You know, with, with all the domination from Tino Grace, they're only up one goal. So right. if you're ACF, so you go, you're thinking, hey, if we can hang in there, we could you, we could regroup in the second half and make and make it a, a match out of this despite the statistics. Jacob goes back. Now, played square for Vance. Vance with a cross looking for Engum. It's poked away Boys. by Pika. Collision, pass to Engum, and Engum's first touch let her down. Otherwise, she would have had a right-footed shot. Good step by Thompson in the Titino Grace defense. Katie Thomas lost it off her foot, but now it's in Kane. Kane gets by Pika to the byline, squares it for Engum. Engum lines up a shot, that's blocked. Well defended by Anderson. Still with Titino Grace. Wide for Vance, a little give and go with Jacob, and it's into the arms of Everson as she's got good instincts there coming yep. off her line to collect that. She has a good sense of where the players are. You know, like we were saying a few minutes ago, they got these three people out there that are all outstanding shooters. Everson's doing a good job of seeing where they are. Down the right side. Looking for Vance, and she just runs out of real estate. But yeah, they are attacking every which way yep. as the stop clock gets uh, is stopped for a substitution. Raina Ricketts coming on, or Raina Ricks rather, coming on in that uh, striker role, replacing Lauren Jones. Vance lays it off, playing with a real high soccer IQ. You can tell her dad is a, is a long time coach. Right, and also an older brother who was a very good player for Tatino Grace. Tatino content to possess and knock it about. Stolen here, though, by ACFC into the channel. Finally, Cantwell gets a touch as she comes out and boots it forward. First touch for her at 3.07 of the first half. That's how tilted the pitch has been in favor of the Eagles. Jacob on the turn. Gets it wide for Vance with plenty of space. Terhar has uh, been operating down the left, but now with Kane still in the game, Terhar's moved more into a central role as the clock continues to run with uh, two and a half minutes remaining. 
Audrey Pavlinsky. Tatino Grace beat Spring Lake Park 2-0 and lost to Andover 3-1 so far. Finished last season, as we said, with an 11-5-2 record. They have it back right here. Trying to add a second goal before half. They've uh, certainly dominated play so far on the road, but they don't have much to show for it, just a one-goal lead. Yeah, they were, their possessions percentage has to be pretty high. Oh, it's got to be in the 75% 70 70 to 80% yeah. range, yeah. Great job dancing through defenders. Engum trying to feed a cutting Terhar. It's a pretty narrow attack right here as Jacob steals it away. Jacob trying to slalom through defenders. Only as far as Vance. Molly Vance still with it. Out to Engum who fires a shot <laughs> and a diving save made by Everson. That was a pretty shot and a great save to follow it up. Everson dove to her right and pushed it aside as you see the highlight here. Engum gunning for her second shot. And Engum gunning for her second goal of the game and Everson made the save. Nice leaping One save. So a nice save there by Everson. Now Vance has it with 45 seconds remaining. Squares it. Dropped for Cruzy. Maintains possession and gets it back to Thomas. Off of the defender, Orstad, and out of play. Tino trying to hurry with 30 seconds left. Engum on the turn. Gets it. Oh, beautiful turn by Terhar. Left-footed shot off the post. <laughs> Still loose, and now it's cleared. 17 seconds remain. Battle for possession as Jacob takes it back. Cruzy on the turn. Left-footed shot. Everson's there. Time will run out here in the first half. Our first half completely dominated by Tatino Grace. They get an Elena Engum goal. 42 seconds into this game, and then they pile the pressure on ACFC. But uh, Armstrong, Armstrong Cooper Football Club relied on the freshman goalkeeper, Sam Everson, who made a number of spectacular saves. And we go to the break with a one-goal lead for Tatino Grace. We'll be back with uh, first half analysis, highlights, and more here from Robbinsdale Armstrong. 1-0, Tatino Grace on top here at the break on CCX. Here at the Falcons Nest at Robinsdale Armstrong High School. Bill Hupp and Sid Ligry at halftime. Detino Grace leads Armstrong Cooper Football Club by a score of one to nil. And uh, Sid Ligry, it was uh, one way traffic in that first half. The Eagles dominant from uh, pillar to post as we look at first half highlights. And uh, ACFC kicked off, but then it was all. Tatino Grace, a lot of the offense started by Kayla Terhar, and they scored 42 seconds in. Ellen, Elena Engum finishing off that one as it skipped over Jacob right to Engum, and she made no mistake. But Engum was a force for the rest of the half as well as she made freshman goalkeeper Sam Everson really work 
a save there. And then Kane put it on net and forced another save. Vance put one in, a volleyball save from Everson as well. And then Terhar as well, turning off the post. So great uh, body positioning from Tatino Grace and great space. And they, uh, as you see the halftime statistics, just totally one-sided. And uh, that doesn't even show possession, which was probably 80, 80 to 85% to Tino Grace in that first half. Just completely dominant from the Eagles and very impressive. It was extremely impressive. I mean, it, it was exciting. There was no dull moment at all for, for to Tino Grace. Uh, the, the only good news for uh, Armstrong is that they are only one goal down. So they can come back in the second half and make it. But you look at the stats, you know, 18 shots, nine shots on goal, that's nine saves, no fouls and eight corner kicks. And for Armstrong Cooper Football Club, you got zero, 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 two fouls, zero corners. So no offense because they haven't been able to make any kind of an offense. Yeah, about the only thing that, you know, perhaps uh, Totino Grace coach Matt Thibodeau could complain about is, you know, it'd be nice if we had a few more goals. But other than that, no fouls, eight corner kicks, nine shots. I mean, <laughs> nine shots on goal. It, it just a totally perfect first half for Totino Grace. And they hope to continue that effort in the second half. We'll have the kickoff of that in a moment here on CCX. one nothing our score at the break. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content, now available on Roku and Apple TV. Elena Engum, the goal scorer for Tatino Grace with her first of the year. 42 seconds into the first half, puts it the Eagles out in front, and they it was all them after that. I mean, Sam Everson, the goalie, comes in. As you look at the change in goalie for Tatino Grace, junior Savannah Hardiger takes uh, the place of Kalen Cantwell, who I think kicked the ball once in that first half by our count, Sig. I don't know. I don't think she did. Well, she came out. She came off oh. her line one time okay. and cleared it. That was, so yeah. did not actually touch the ball in her own box. She just uh, came off her line and cleared it away. And that was her one contribution today for <laughs> Tatino Grace. <laughs> and she's been replaced by her junior counterpart, Savannah Hardinger. ACFC has just taken the field. Tatino Grace Wearing the white with the blue lettering and numbers. They'll be moving left to right on your screen. It's there you look at Sam Everson, the freshman goalkeeper. Came in with 20 saves. She's already got 29 now for the season. I know. Because That's she's made nine saves in that first half. Some of them spectacular. Some of them routine, but some of them unbelievable. Yeah, there was there was some that were just unbelievable that she can get there. Now we'll see how the ACFC team has made their adjustments for the second half. And we'll see what adjustments, if any, they've made as uh, Marin Sherber loses it out of play in front of the Eagles bench. And for Totino Grace, I think their uh, goal, pun not intended, is goals because they dominated in every other aspect, but they only got the one goal to show for it. And so ACFC still in this game. Jacob steals it, and it's cleared out of play by Izzy Anderson on the near side. Bill Hop along with uh, Sid Ligry on the broadcast. Boys game will be to follow. Jay Wilcox will have that one for you on CCX. As they throw it to the byline, Jacob knocked down, and it's a goal kick for ACFC. What are you looking to see from each team here in the second half, Sig? I think uh, you hit it for Tatino Grace. You're doing what, doing what you want to do, and you're succeeding. Just get some goals. Get the ball, either hit it harder or move it around better so you get a better uh, quality shot. For ACFC Tide, tell my team, hey, you, you're in the game. You're not. You're only down by one, but you got to get some momentum going. You got to get some ball control and get some shots off. Got to maybe win more of those 50-50 balls as this is played into the channel. Yeah, that's the other problem that ACFC has had. There's a shot and a goal. 
Blasted over Everson. It's another goal, and it's courtesy of Mackenzie Kane, her second of the season. That goal coming just a minute, 36 seconds into the second half. So Tatino Grace doing what they do, scoring early. And quite frankly, there's nothing that Everson could have done on this shot. A fantastic strike as the little step over and then bang, back of the net for Kane. And that's exactly what we talked about in the first half with, with Kane and Vance on the, on the outside. They're hitting those, those angle shots like this one. You, and you're right, there's nothing the keeper can do with it. You have to get yourself in front of the, of the forward, but they're so good at now at, at, at hitting those angle shots. That, I mean, what do you do as a, as a keeper? Not much you can do when there's that much power behind it, I think. I mean, Everson made a few nice saves when it was hit in her direction, and she could just jump up and kind of push it over. But that one just had too much power yep. and pace behind it from Kane, who started the first half. She did not start today. She started on the bench. It was an impact sub. Starts here in the second half after a good first half yep. and rewards Coach Matt Thibodeau with an immediate goal here, a minute and a half or thereabouts into the second half. It's a good look at number eight, Kane. As uh, Ellen Jacob takes it away from Holmes. Jacob crosses it only as far as Anderson. Vance tries to bring it down. <laughs> Instead, it goes out of play. But this must be one of the more fun games Tatino Grace has played in as it has been so one-sided right. here. Every, everything's working in their in their favor. Here's another. Angum drops it back for Cruzy. They're always on the attack, so I, yeah. yeah. Kane but gets to the byline again, crosses it in front, and they toe poke it wide. Oh, Jacob had a, the wide open goal after Everson had come out, but she shot it wide. I feel like you barely have time to talk, Sig, because they're always on the they're always on watch, the attack. Watch this great cross. Just crossed this it. What, this, they're doing they're doing what we talked about before. They do the same thing, same position, same aggressive, but you got to kick the ball a little bit harder to get it past that, that Everson because she's just too quick. But and, and Everson got her fingertips to that cross, but there was so much, again, so much pace on it that it got to the boot of, of uh, Jacob, and then she just, she just uh, missed the shot, tried to pick out the corner and missed, and that's the thing. We talked about it. 2-0 is the score, right? but how many times has Tatino Grace dragged it wide as the ball is set up for a free kick in the, a Robin, in the uh, ACFC half? Flicked on by Jacob, but Everson's there. How many times have they dragged it wide of the, uh, wide of the net? Oh, many. <laughs> so that one, I think Willie's gonna give her a shot on goal on that one. Be interesting to see what the final statistics look like. Not much support up there for Lauren Jones as well played by Caitlin Thompson and Thompson pumps it forward, trying to pick out Engum. Instead, it's knotted down right into the path of Pika. There's the other fa big factor, the takeaways. You know, the 50-50s are going like 70% to Tutino Grace. Yep. Yep, no question about it. Yeah, we don't we don't have Willie tra track those stats because he he wants more money. But <laughs> yeah, we can, we kind of have a feel for the game, and we, we, you can you can tell as as the audience what's happening with the time of possession. Nice control by Engum to bring it down, but it's knocked out of play, forced out by Izzy Anderson. As we are just a little over five minutes gone by here in the second half, to Tino Grace's doubled their lead and they are comfortably in command here on the road looking to go above 500 and get their second victory of the season. Chance now here for ACFC though as Merrick is offside, flag up on the far side. That's just one of the few offsides. I don't think we've called too many offsides. Just, just the one, the first one. That's the first one, because Tatino Grace that hasn't really been their, their game, so. No. They have been just passing defeat, right. short passes, and ball control. 
possession, right? And that's what Coach Thibodeau talked to you about yes. right before the game. Yeah, he was talking about uh, having good possession, and I asked him about the midfielder, and he was right about that. Merrick down line and wisely letting it go out is uh, Cecilia Savard. One of, again, five Eagles that wear the captain's armband for this Totino Grace team. Savannah Hardinger. You see two right there, Savard and Vance. Here's another in Ling. Picked up, played through the middle. Look at that passing. Great, great passing, very narrow, but they are just matriculating it down the field. Engum takes a shot from distance, Everson behind it, spills the rebound, but gets on it before uh, Cruzy can get there. I mean, they move, move that ball down there so fast, it was like practice. Kane. Now it's dropped back. Back to Kane, who's battled for the ball with uh, Ella Camp. Yeah, their passes are just seem to be finding the the right feet all after all uh, all evening. This may be a luck thing. I, I'm not sure ACFC is going to want to play at Armstrong if they're 2-0 and oh at Cooper and can't come back in this game. Nice turn by Kane. Lefty cross off of Faith Holmes and out of play. So first, second half corner kick for Totino Grace. But what, their ninth of the game, I believe? That would be their ninth. Eight in the first yeah. half, yeah. Yes, yes, you're right. Elena Engum, who has put them in dangerous spots all night to take the right-footed in-swinger. Engum to the far post, right to Vance. It's loose in front, and Everson dives on it just ahead of Jacob. Great opportunity as that fell right to Vance, but she could not put it away. Throw down the line for Engum to try to chase. She gets it. Right-footed shot. Another save for Everson. Back to Engum. Left-footed shot this time, and Everson <laughs> makes another one. How did she get back over there that fast? Right. She must have anticipated it was going to be on the far post because that's where she ended up. Yeah, I mean, that was a quick succession trying to show you the skill. Engum goes right foot. That didn't work. Right back to her goes left foot. Tried to curl it past, and Everson saved it both times. Wow. She's got to be up to, what, 13, 14 saves? We'll check with Willie on that. But she has made – she has been very active tonight. 14 shots on goal. 14 saves tonight. She may equal the 20 that she came into the game with at this rate. We still got 30 minutes, 30 and a half minutes left I, to I play. Know. At this rate, she'll, she came in with 20 saves on the season. She may equal that in this game. Who the first, you don't often see the foul throw called. But it's back to ACFC. <laughs> And see, I, I don't think either one of us expected this kind of one-sided affair no. here. But credit to Totino Grace. They came out like a house of fire, and they have not let up ever since pressing, taking the ball back, mm -hmm. the and creating yeah. chances. The 50-50s, stepping around the defenders like that, and ja then the nice cross. Jacob ball, and the Abby Lord was lurking. Could not get there ahead of Everson who uh, has continued playing, has not let her head drop despite the scoreline. No, she's uh, she's playing at 100% capability. She's been phenomenal. Kane avoids the tackle of Camp. Kane and Camp Good. doing battle. Great footwork by Kane. And it goes off of Holmes for another Tatino Grace corner. This is their 10th corner of the match. Oh, 
Swung in, off the line. Engum gets it back. Engum, left-footed cross, headed out toward Vance. She couldn't flick it on. Yeah, she was off balance. Otherwise, yeah. she could have she could have put that in with an easy header. Could have been a hockey assist. Great job by Ling to ward off the pressure. Lord back for Engum and Everson. Couldn't relatively get, comfortable for her. Yeah, couldn't get much on that one. It was a little bit a little bit off balance. Everson again with the goal with the uh, punt. Interesting punt she has. Yeah, sometimes they're impressive and they're more of a sort of directional, so she can start the attack if she aims it right. But again. Just not allowing ACFC to have it at all. Great outlet pass for Kane. Down the left wing. Mackenzie Kane cuts inside and it's cleared once more out of play. Nicely dealt with by Kira Snapko. But again, that uh, sets up a corner kick for Tatino Grace. Already their third of the half from that corner. Another good one. I Everson comes out, punches it initially, and then makes the save right to herself. And that's what you want to do as a keeper, punch the ball up so that you're the one that has control of it. Elena Engum continuing to make things happen and putting uh, crosses in dangerous areas. Another takeaway deep in the... Great ball Defensive movement third. just behind Vance, who was... How did they do that? They missed a pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was bound to happen at some point, but uh, has not happened too much tonight. Not much to complain about tonight for Matt Thibodeau. No. His Eagles have dominated statistically and on the field. And they lead it thanks to two early goals in the first and second half. Goals, early goals in each half. One by uh, Elena Angam and one by Mackenzie Kane to give them a two goal advantage. A little one, two down the right wing. In the middle, great job continuing to make the run. Elizabeth Thompson into the box. The cross, or actually that's uh, Chloe Nuss, beg your pardon. It's out, they hit it from distance and that goes wide. Neverson watching it to go wide. That's the one thing they haven't really done is beaten Everson from distance. There have been shots from outside the box, but she's managed to handle all of those. I did. Yeah, she can she can see them so well that and she knows where to position herself. I did Coon Rapids and Centennial last Monday, and the Cougars were just firing from all kinds of distance, and accurately so. And the uh, diminutive Cardinals goalkeeper tried so super hard and played well, but just couldn't do nothing about it. Yeah. A well-placed shot into the upper corner. I mean. Yeah, those you can't. That's what happened last stuff. Last week at the uh, Maple Grove and Champlain Park boys game that we covered. Nice one, two for Kane. Lefty cross again is deflected out by Snapco. So Engum beating a path to that corner flag. Already her fourth trip over there in this half. That Chris Frange is quite the player for the Crimson, oh, isn't he? Just amazing. Another another well-placed corner kick. Another good one, and Everson's over there to knock it up, knock it free. And she, she is uh, battling and seems to be enjoying herself. Angam will do it again. This one not as good, but it goes out of play, and so we'll, we'll try it again. Yep. Snapco just content to knock it out. Third time's the charm as a couple substitutes re-enter re the game. Olivia Schroeder and uh, a pair for RCAFC. Audrey Poplinski and uh, Maddie Orsted. This is the sixth corner of the second half. 
Engum with another beauty, and it's oh, miss somehow it. not <laughs> headed in. Oh, I don't know. Chloe Nuss was it was right on her head, and she just could not direct it home, here, missing the left post. Here it is. Just missed it. Just could not no. steer it in that in that left corner. Yeah, I think she had to lean for it a little bit, and that's probably why she couldn't get much but another, uh, direction on it. But another beautiful ball yeah. in Sig. And uh, just giving her, Engum, just giving her teammates the opportunity to attack that ball. Yeah, they Not seen a header goal yet, though. They've only had one weak corner, quick, and that was one prior to that one. The rest have been right on target. And, and to be fair, Everson has played some of them well, and yep. some of them just right in the middle of the box and with a chance for her teammates to, uh, to go get the ball. Again, the pressure and the pressing from Tatino Grace results in a turnover. Lord tries a little give and go with Cruzy, and it's cleared and out of bounds. And so now for the first time this half, they'll have a near side corner. We'll see if Angam goes over to take that one. Nope, this time it'll be, I believe, Terhar, yep. Whose name we have not called as much in the second half. No, but she's the one to set up that beautiful opening shot. They may go short corner, they thought about it. Yeah, I think, oh, there they go. Terhar pushed away. Cleared, but not out. See, and that's what makes those corner kicks so dangerous because they're coming down right in front of the goal area and they've got the uh, players up there waiting for it. It becomes a very dangerous situation for the, for the defense. Finally, Schroeder hooks it uh, free. Flicked on by Kane, headed away. Again cleared, but not out. Tear hard. Everson down to her right to make the save. Another shot and another save in this game. We're nearing the midway point of the second half. And the th story of the first half has continued here in the second half. All to Tino Grace here this afternoon. Yeah, we, yeah, we haven't seen much of a change actually in, in, the, in the dynamics of the game. Yeah. Now, here's a potential chance for uh, Abby Mer Ava Merrillick rather is she overhits the uh, through ball and ultimately runs out of bounds near the corner flag. Emily Ling shepherding it out. I think they were hoping for a goal kick, but it's a throw in. So now we'll see if Tino Grace gets pinned down here. Every time they have been, they've just managed to ping, 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 yep. pass it out. And quickly transition from defense to offense. Yeah, that's the thing I was talking to Coach Thibodeau before the game about the transition, because you know, one of the things I watch for is how well does the team transition? Well, they actually got a shot. Yep, nice shot uh, gotten off by Raina Ricks into the waiting arms of goaltender Savannah Hardinger. First shot of the game recorded Three quarters of the way through the game yep. by ACFC. First shot, first shot on goal. Tino Grace, meanwhile, has got to be up near 30 shots, I would imagine now. 28. 28 shots for Tino Grace. Free kick given to ACFC. And 16 of those were on goal. <laughs> Pretty good accuracy. And, and how many of them have just been pulled wide of the post no. or hit the post? Quite a few, actually. But it's, it's hard to, you know, we don't, we don't track that, but it's been, it's been Everson said that's been keeping ACFC in the game. Captain for ACFC goes out is Matty Orstad, who uh, shares the captain armband with Lauren Jones. Speaking of Jones, flicks it on here, gives chase, battling with Terhar, and it goes out for a goal kick. As you see, the 
Robbinsdale Armstrong boys team warming up ahead of their clash with the Totino Grace Eagles. Jay Wilcox and Sig be on the call for that one coming up here at 7 o'clock. Yeah, I'd be curious to know if the an own four record if Totino Grace has just played a wicked schedule early or I don't know or what their situation is, but it's unlike the Eagles to be 0 and 4. No. As you said, yeah, all the years we've been covering soccer, they've had they've always had a good team or a good side from Totino Grace boys. Oh, beautiful spin beautiful. move by Kane. Kane with green grass ahead of her. Dropped off for Terhar. Terhar wide. They love those for wide. Nuss. They love those wide shots, don't they? Yeah, they, they do love to get the ball wide. Fundamental soccer. Nice job by Ling to step forward and steal it. Ling carries it, draws two defenders, goes off one of them, and that'll be a corner kick. And it's Totino Grace's forward pressing that is earning these corner yes. kicks. Sig. Yeah. When you have that many corner kicks, that tells you that the offense is doing its job. They're they're pushing the ball down. They're they're making good plays and and they're they're getting some quality shots. So we have uh, Cecilia Savard coming up from her fullback position to take this. Savard hits it. It. Bounds free in the box and is eventually swept away. Back out to midfield, Thompson. Up for Jacob, shared for Schroeder. Lord, back to Jacob. Jacob thought she might line up a shot, gets it wide for Nuss. Jacob dancing with it. Gets a oh. shot off, but uh, end product did not uh, match the move to get free. Yeah, that one was a little bit off target, but but again, moving the ball up, good possession. Yeah, great, great unselfish play. Continuing to get it wide to the yep. wings and drawing defenders as Merlick goes off. Ling kind of jumping up into the play to join the the attack. Engum has uh, gone out as DeWitt prepares to return along with Ella Camp for ACFC. Ling with the throw in in front of her own bench. Schroeder. Jacob. Great unselfish play. DeWitt looking for a camp, not quite angled properly, and so it's out of bounds for a throw. And I think that time ACFC defense was anticipating that pass and got into the passing lane. Here's an opportunity for ACFC. Jones drops it. Jacob in there as well. Pick up. Loses out. Nice move by Schroeder. Schroeder for Lord. Back for Schroeder. And she is squeezed off the ball by a couple ACFC defenders. He just don't give you a moment's rest on no. the ball, Sig. And that's what you want to do. You want to keep, keep the pressure. Keep moving the ball. Kane, oh, nice skips step by her defender. Lefty cross for Lord. Now to Schroeder. Jacob gets it wide for Nuss. Back on her ref, left foot, and then it's well defended and uh, stolen away. Defended nicely down there by Ella Pica, who has been, I think, the standout fullback yep. in this game for Armstrong Cooper. Stolen again by to Tino Grace. Savard, Jacob. Wide for Nuss. 
It's getting crossing practice, if nothing else. Gets by Pika, actually Pika. Physical, knocked her off the ball and ended up earning a goal kick for yep. her team. That was good defense. As you see here, Nuss just wanted to blow by her and Pika clipped it. And it ended up going off of Nuss and out of play. She seems to be okay. Vance replacing Nuss. Yeah, she's still hobbling, she's so. A little gingerly. At this stage, there's no reason to leave her in and be worried about injury. I mean, the thing I like about this team is that they are so spread out in terms of quality players. Here's Not when you've got a big game on Thursday in two days at Centennial. Ooh. Which is, uh, despite the loss to Blaine, they're still the sixth ranked team in the state. Yeah. So a big one coming up for the Eagles after this. Another corner kick dealt with this time. Vance squared, looking for DeWitt, and it's cut out. ACFC, meanwhile, will play, will visit St. Anthony at five o'clock on Thursday. So a date with the Huskies of St. Anthony Village. Vance steals it away after a little bit of uh, play from Pika to keep it in bounds. All good recovery though. Nicely done by uh, Katie or by, beg your pardon, Emma K. Dyson. Inside of 12 minutes to go here. To Tino Grace in full command as uh, Thompson commits a foul. Or beg your pardon, Savard. And again, a clean game. There's only been a handful of, of fouls called. Yeah, I think my, by my unofficial count, I think three now for Armstrong and what, two for Tatino Grace or something? So uh, that I can remember, but it could be off. Yeah, it's two for Tatino Grace and three for ACFC. Five for the game. That's yeah. uh, pretty unheard of. I have a feeling we'll see more in the boys' game. Oh, you can count on that. <laughs> And it just, it's just, it goes night takeaway. ACFC with an opportunity. And a great job of uh, putting pressure by their defender. Knocked off the, uh, off the ball and just a great guy drop by Ling to shield it. We do not have a 29 on our roster, but uh, Terrific effort by her. Now Jones battling with Savard, no foul call. There is another shot on goal and bounding harmlessly into Hartinger's arms. And in fact, I think a foul was, did indeed get called as Caitlin Thompson comes back to take it. This is better from ACFC. First extended spell is DeWitt ends up fouling Merrillick. Jones in there as well. And with 10 minutes to go in the game, there'll be a free kick coming up for ACFC. Looks like it's gonna be Matty Orstad, the captain, who will yep. take it. 30 yards out, right by the hash mark. And I think, honestly, she just got tripped up in a tangle of legs and knocked down Merrillick, but it is a foul. And so a shot, you know, like you said, 30 yards out with the goalie looking into the sun. Orstad flashes it by the right post. Another shot, not on goal, but another shot as the uh, co-captain for this ACFC club. Boy, they would love to get a goal now and get back on the game. Yeah, and all of a sudden, what, what, what? The dynamics of this game would really change if ACFC were able to, to get a goal here, because then all of a sudden it's a one-goal game, 
And if you're Tatino Grace, you're thinking, we've just dominated this game. Right. That would for be almost all of it, and now we're we're almost close to uh, throwing points away. Square. Nice moves by Abby Hansen, the freshman. Her shot's blocked. Tatino trying to get the ball back. Marilick loses out. And again, nice moves by Thompson. This is more what we're used to seeing. That pass just out of the reach of Olivia Schroeder. DeWitt battling. Nice job by Orsted. Now DeWitt takes it back. Control in the midfield, and DeWitt earns the foul for Totino Grace. No quit in this ACFC team. Nope. Yeah, like I said, they're only down two. If you get one, you're back in the game. That may be a tall order if Tertino Grace <clears throat> maintains their domination. <coughs> yep, they, uh, again, I think if they have one concern from this game is, you know, we're going to have to to take our chances against the Centennials of the world because... The Cougars do have the offensive prowess to to make you pay as we see a couple new subs come into the game. Sherber returning, Cruzy, Katie Thomas as uh, Schroeder goes out. Nearing the seven minute mark left in the second half here at the Falcons nest. Jones takes it away. Going wide and it runs out. What have you been most uh, impressed with this evening from Tatino Grace Sig? Oh, wow, there's too, mu too much of a list on that one. I like the possession. I think that's the key for, for their success. And they do it in, in all the areas where you need to, when you're on offense, when you're going 50-50. Even on defense, they've been, they've been able to possess the ball well and move it up. And look how quickly they get up the field. Yeah, they transition fo so fast. This is Terhar fighting off defenders. Terhar getting to the byline, and she earns a corner kick as once again Kira Snapko knocks it out of play. Engum giving the co-captain a uh, a nice high five as Kayla Terhar has been a menace down that left wing, driving at defenders, yep. taking them on, driving it to the byline, and then getting crosses in. This time it's Engum who will... Uh, Take this corner kick. Not one of her best by her standards, but she gets another crack at a cross here. Headed down and cleared by ACFC. Good step by Thompson. Inside of six minutes left. Terhar. Beautiful moves again to get free. And it's another corner kick. This time it was Ella Camp battling with Terhar. Well, they've surpassed the first half. They have 10 corners in the half combined with eight in the first. <laughs> 18 corner kicks. Yep. And they have not scored from one yet. No. Close, but. No, they've had. They've, they've, they've been had very the close. They've had the opportunity. Engum. To the them. near post. It's loose. Drop back for Ling outside the box. Oh, and a nice job by Anderson to come over and take it off of Ling's toes. Oh, she got her pocket picked on that one. Nice defensive play. Smart by Savard to just let the ball run out. Anderson uh, with a goal on the season. Senior midfielder seems to be playing more in that fullback role tonight. Engum gives chase. And she had to hold her run to avoid being offside. Kind of surprised Molly Vance hasn't cracked the score sheet tonight. She's been close. There she is, number four. They thought about switching fields. Now they will. Thompson on the far side. Terhar, again, blows by Camp. Terhar spins <clears throat> and earns another corner for the Eagles. 
See, that's so hard. That is so hard to defend that because they're coming at you at full speed. Then they change direction, pass the wall. You just see her running at her yeah. defenders right here. A little hesitation, lowers the shoulder. Good recovery by Camp, though. Gets a high five as she comes to the bench. She had a great game. Hangum, it falls kindly for Kane. Vance, Ling, Ling goes for goal and finds it. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable, Emily Ling from outside the box popped a shot over the head of Sam Everson for goal number three tonight for Tatino Grace. That's a perfect wedge shot. I wish I could hit a wedge shot like she just played that <laughs> ball. Number that 20, was beautiful. Emily Ling scoring for the Eagles. Here's, look at this again. Battling for the ball. Takes her time, sets it up, gets underneath it, and just sinks it into the corner. There's nothing Everson can do about that one. She just chipped her, really. Yeah, it was a chip shot. Yeah, just chipped the goalie. Yeah. I couldn't do that with a nine iron if my life depended on it. Three nothing with 3.11 left. That goal coming at the 36, 32 mark of the second half. Emily Ling, her <clears throat> first of the season of her senior campaign makes it three nil to Tino Grace. And it's safe to say, I think the Eagles will collect all three points from this contest. Yeah, now here's ACFC with a Opportunity 40 yards out again by the hash mark. Anderson to take it. Puts a good cross in. Hardinger banged into and they tap it home, but the flag is up. I think and that, that was goal offside. will be waved off. Yeah. I think they're actually going to call a foul. And uh, on the attacker that ran into that collided with Hardinger. Or Hardinger, I should say. See the replay of that one again, but Hardinger came out, was clattered into, and then when she was down, they poked it in the goal. Waved off. Great ball for Engum up to Camp. Or Kane, rather. Kane gets by Camp. Boy, how do you how do you mark somebody like that? I mean, just uses the hesitation and the blow by so well. Yeah, the little stutter step that she has and, and able to keep control of the ball. Jacob goes wide looking for Vance. Instead, it's stolen. Orstad and then taken back by Vance. Here's Orstad. Anderson. And this is Engum on the turn. Engum goes wide for Vance. Nice job taking it away. Now potential break on here for ACFC with one minute to go here in the game. One minute remaining in the second half. And Picka loses the ball to Thompson. Look how quickly Totino Grace transitions. Their oh, counterattack yeah. is lethal. 50 seconds remaining out of the reach of Jacob and out of play on the far side. Right in midfield, this beautiful turf field here at the Falcons Nest in Robbinsdale. Or in Plymouth, I suppose, technically. Totino Grace will improve to two and one on the season. ACFC will fall to two and two. So we said the Eagles will play at Centennial on Thursday. Should be interesting. And ACFC will visit St. Anthony Village on Thursday as well. Nine, eight, seven. Engum turns and fires one for good measure that flashes four, by the net. Three, two, Totino Grace shoots at will from start to finish. They dominate all 80 minutes of this one, and they win 3-0 over ACFC. Sid Ligree, what would you think of what you saw tonight from the Eagles here on the road. Very impressive on their composure. Their, as we said several times, their possession. Lots of speed. 
I mean, an accurate passing, not just moving the ball, but moving the ball to someone where they know they're going to be, and then the recipient knows that it's coming and then takes off and keeps going. Footwork has been spectacular. You watch Kane moving down the sideline. It just goes right past the defender, kicks it back. And uh, Everson, wow, what a good job. How many saves did she end up finishing with? I'd have to go back and look at it. Everson, well, we'll say she finished with nearly 20 saves. 20, yeah. Tatino Grace rattled off over 30 shots, and they just peppered that uh, ASCFC net he, all night long. I mean, scoring 42 seconds into this game, courtesy of Elena Engum, and, and then getting a goal early in the second half to, to make it a little more comfortable before adding one on late. And uh, that's how we reached our, our final score. Go ahead, yeah, sir. Everson's got uh, 17 saves tonight. So came into the game with 20, finished tonight with 17. A spectacular effort on her part despite uh, taking the loss in this one. So that'll do it here from the Falcons' nest in Plymouth. For director Isaac Rice and my color analyst Sig Ligri, I'm Bill Hub saying good night from Robbinsdale Armstrong, where again the final Tatino Grace comes on the road and uh, wins this one comfortably 3-0 over ACFC here at the Falcons' nest. Thanks for watching this presentation of high school soccer on CCX.